It's like an oven in here. And in a way, it should be. Oh. Finishing soon. Yeah. I think I'll just take Zed for a walk then. Okay. Come on, Zeb. Come on. Come on then. Another cult figure among the young enough or gullible enough to dabble in these mysteries is the self-styled Abbot of Lufford. A middle-aged American of somewhat obscure background, he is seldom seen outside the confines of the converted urban rectory where he lives. He declined to grant us an interview, but perhaps the profundity of his intellect and indeed a fitting epitaph on the whole gallimorphy of mumbo-jumbo that has been the subject of our program can be found in A History of Witchcraft a tome which Mr. Carswell, the abbot of Lufford, published privately in 1969. Vice is the only true virtue. Lust is the only true modesty. Indecency, the only true decorum. And evil, the only true good. What did you think? I didn't tell you very much. What is there to tell? Alchemy? Witchcraft? Demonology? I thought Prudence did a very good demolition job. Yes, that, that man they mentioned towards the end, Carswell. Yes, pity she couldn't have got him on the screen. I seem to remember that name. Look, nasty associations. Carswell. Oh, well, it'll come to me, but it was something unpleasant, though.
Joe, Joe, can you hand me that file? Thanks. This um, this acupuncture fellow, what does he want? He says he's waiting for a reply to his telephone call. Oh, Patel. Yeah. Oh, he's the one who keeps phoning to ask if we pay him for interviewing him. Lord, him? Right and tell him to piss off. You thought he might be interesting, being an Indian. <laughs> yes. Well, not that interesting. <laughs> Well done, Prudence. Oh, thanks. It was all right, wasn't it? Of course it wasn't all right. It was excellent. The alchemist were a bit of an easy target, perhaps. Oh, come on, Derek. You only gave them two and a quarter minutes. Oh, yes, oh, yes. No criticism. You had to deal with them. But some of the others put up a pretty good fight. <laughs> Didn't you just love the man doing the Yuri Geller? <laughs> Getting it all wrong. <laughs> Terrific. I knew you'd like it. <laughs> uh, the fellow you quoted at the end, um, Carslake. No, Cars well. It's a pity he wouldn't appear, wasn't it? Mm. Did you speak to him at all? No, no. I uh, found his book in the Brotherton Library, but we wrote to him. Wouldn't, wouldn't come in there. Mm -hmm. Do you thought you remembered something about him? Something unpleasant? He's a bit of a bogeyman locally, apparently, but, well... So, what now? On with the fringe medicine. Oh, damn, yeah. Back to the acupuncturist, the osteopaths, the hypnotists. <laughs> oh, Joe, there she is. What's this? Nightdress. Oh, it's lovely, Prue. Did you say? I didn't. Oh, Derek, I meant to tell you the most extraordinary thing. I'm just in the mood for extraordinary things. No, really. We saw that program last night. It was your company, wasn't it? The one about witchcraft and all that. Guilty? Well, actually, we only caught the last bit. John turned it on to see the news. The news was good. Thanks. So, listen. The bit about the Abbot of Lufford. Carswell, yes. What was it about him? When we were both at Hayes and Lawton. John Harrington. I knew it. I knew I remembered. Remembered what? Oh, it's all a lot of nonsense. Tell us, anyway. Well, you know Jean and I both used to work at Hayes and Law. Well, there was a reader we used to use called Harrington. John Harrington. A very funny man. I mean, witty. And a devastating when he wanted to be. But we always used to send him all the cranky stuff we got in. I mean, some of his reports were an absolute scream sometimes. This was, what, 10, 12 years ago? 1968. Yes, so there was a plethora of flower power and psychedelic pseudo-mystic manuscripts coming in. And we always used to give them to John Harrington. This is awful. Anyway, that book you quoted on the programme last night, The History of Witchcraft, that was submitted to us by Miss Carswell. I mean, I remember. We sent it back unread the first time. I mean, it was in longhand. 
Poulain had. It was beautiful. It was, it was like an illuminated manuscript. But he sent it back to us again, and we shoved it onto poor John Harris. So what's so awful? Do you remember his report, Jean? Yes. It was a masterpiece of destructive criticism. He was an oddity, was John. He was full of arcane knowledge and bits and pieces of everything. The thing was, his reader's report was so funny, it got sort of passed around the office. And somehow, Carswell got hold of a copy of it. Um. Well, John Harrington died. It makes sense, really. Almost every bone in his body was broken. Oh, let's talk about something else. Well, you brought it up. Yes, I know. I've forgotten the details. I've forgotten what his brother said. What did his brother say? Said he didn't recognize John at first. Said his face was fixed in a sort of animal smile. Said he'd only seen a snarl like it once before. On a cat that had been run over. Are you saying that this has something to do with what's his name? Carswell? Fitting epitaph on the whole gallimorphia of mumbo jumbo that has been the subject of our program can be found in A History of Witchcraft, a term which Mr. Carswell, the abbot of Lufford, published privately in 1969. Vice is the only true virtue. Lust is the only true modesty. Indecency, the only true decorum and evil, the only true good. Peter? Yeah? What the hell's that? Hmm? We didn't transmit that, did we? Certainly not. Hold on. Hmm. Well, it must be some kind of joke. Someone's cut it into the print. Curiouser and curiouser. Couldn't have been cut in, there aren't any joins. Well, somebody must have done something if it didn't go out like that. Do you think it could have been stamped on? Doesn't look like it. Looks like a perfectly normal graphic to me. Hmm. Only the wrong one. Forum. Well, I'll talk to my assistant in the morning and we'll check the negative and see if it's on that. You, uh, you don't happen to know anyone called John Harrington? I don't think so. This one's a little bit unattainable. According to this, he died ten years ago. That's all right. 
most clumsy of me. Oh. Thank you. It was urgent, so I told him you were at the library. He said he'd contact you there. Pamela ill? Mm, in hospital at the infirmary. He said it was food poisoning. Well, I don't know any Dr. Smith. Uh, did he leave a number? No. Good night. Night, Joe. Has she eaten any fish lately that might have been off? I don't know. She just rents a room in my house. So... Actually, we do share the same kitchen, but... Uh... Look, she's going to be all right. Oh, yes. Well, thanks very much. Thank you. Uh, you're not the Dr. Smith who telephoned my office? No, my name's Bannister. Uh, who telephoned for the ambulance? Do you know? Yes, she did. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So I just sat there all night. A spider? Well, that's what it... Yes, with teeth, not an ordinary spider. Calling the funny farm, are we? You could say that. Oh, well, Pat, get me my wife, would you? How long is this friend of yours likely to be away? Not Pamela. Oh. The hospital wanted to keep her in another two or three days. Jean? Listen, Prudence is coming to stay for a couple of days. She's been having a bit of a bad time. <laughs> no, no, no. We'll explain when we see you. All right? Bye, darling. Derek. 
There's no need. There is a need. A very definite need. God, honestly. I must sound like a complete loony. Not to me, you don't. Well, actually, another peculiar thing happened last week. What was that? I'm frightened to tell you. The war right. The name John Harrington doesn't mean anything to either of you, does it? But... I'll go and make some coffee. Do you drink coffee through at this time of the night? Yeah, sure. C can I help? No, no, it's fine, but oh, Derek, you could. Or you can turn up heating. You've been lying on top of the fire all evening. Oh, I'm still cold. I, I think there must be something wrong with the boiler. Still with that, you don't. Oh, you did, I just say. wanted to talk to you alone. You've got to tell her. What, the whole thing? Yes. For God's sake, yes. I don't see any real point in frightening the life out of her if there's nothing she can do about it. Well, there must be something we can do. We can certainly try. Well, what? I don't know. What did the second caption say? One month was allowed. Prue, the truth is we do know who John Harrington is. Or was. You know? Well, how? Before I married Derek, I worked for a firm of publishers. We had a reader called John Harrington who wrote a very funny and very scathing report on a book that we'd been sent in manuscript form. Somehow, the author got hold of a copy of this report. And a month later, while he was staying up here with his brother, John died in very mysterious circumstances. Something to do with the book? Yes. What was that book? The History of Witchcraft. <sighs> Carswell. John was undeniably in a very odd state during the weeks before he died. In what way? Well, there were a lot of things. The main one was this conviction that he had that he was being followed. Look, uh, Mr. Harrington, I... I <laughs> call, <laughs> call me Henry Fancy. Okay. I didn't know your brother, of course, so I have to ask this, but... Uh, was he inclined to... I don't know... Uh, delusions? Well, he was an imaginative chap. More sensitive than he'd appear on first acquaintance, but uh, inclined to paranoid fantasy. No. Some of the things that have happened to you, they do remind me of John. <laughs> Can you think of any possible connecting link? Yes. Unfortunately. Go on. Jean Gayton told me that uh, not long before he died, your brother wrote a rather devastating report on a book that they'd had submitted. Well, I produced a television documentary recently and in passing referred to the man who wrote that book in a similar sort of way. Carswell. Something happened to John. It might have a bearing on the situation. He was a great concert goer. Even when he lived up here with me, he used to get out of London once, twice a week. And he'd always keep the program. Not just concerts. Yes, it's true. This is where it happened. Where his body was found. Yes, quite. You, uh, you said he was taking a dog for a walk, right? What happened to the dog? I don't know. He was never seen again. What was I saying? Uh, your, your brother going to concerts. Oh, yes. And as I say, he always kept the programs. One day, about uh, a month before he died, he showed me one. 
over the breakfast table. Actually, he said he almost missed it. The programme, I mean. Uh, it was the end of the concert. It was the Festival Hall, I remember. And uh, he couldn't find his programme. And then this uh, big man sitting next to him realised what he was looking for. And uh, offered him his. Go on. Shall we go back to the hat? As he handed the program across the breakfast table to me, a piece of paper slipped out of it. It had odd, rather runic writing on it, beautifully done. And he picked it up and he said something like, this must belong to my big friend. And then he pushed it across the table toward me. And it was strange because there wasn't a window open or anything. But there was this, uh, before I could pick it up, gust of wind, warm wind. Picked it up, blew it into the fireplace, into the fire. And uh, that was the end of it? Of the piece of paper, certainly. I said, um, I hope it wasn't valuable. You can't give it back to your big friend. But he was furious. He leapt up and shouted at me. Shouted? Shouted what? He said, no, I can't give it back. But you don't have to keep on saying it. I don't know what to say. I only said it once and I told him so. He said once, more like five times. And then he slammed out of the room. Tell me something. Do you feel that there was a connection between your brother's death and that slip of paper? Well, <laughs> it was... Uh, after that, that he began to believe he was being followed. Now, uh, French medicine. see Henry Harrington. Yeah? Well, two weeks before he died, John Harrington received two slightly mysterious things through the post. Now, the first was uh, this. Like one that on a lonesome road doth walk in fear and dread, and having once turned round, walks on and turns no more his head, because he knows a frightful fiend doth close behind him tread. S.T. Coleridge, the ancient mariner, 1772 to 1834. I wonder what you read at Oxford. And what was the other mysterious thing? Well, it was, uh, this. Very ordinary-looking calendar for 1968. Mm hmm Look at December. No, there isn't any December. No. Now look at the last date there is. Well, there's nothing after the 18th of November. It's been cut out. That was the day that John Harrington died. He's arrived through the post, just like this. Yep. And there's more. One month to the day before he died, John Harrington was surreptitiously handed a slip of paper with curious writing on it. What do you mean, surreptitiously? Without his knowledge. Inside a Festival Hall concert program by a big man sitting next to him. Carswell. Probably. Sure. I'm back. I went back to this. Carswell's book. And there's a chapter devoted to a charming little activity called Casting the Runes. Harrington told me that from the brief glimpse he'd had of the slip of paper, it looked as if the writing on it was in runic characters. Casting the Runes? What does it mean? Well, some sort of spell, I suppose, or curse. You write it on a piece of paper, hand it personally to your victim, and within a specified time, the victim's dead. No, Prue, I hate to admit it, but I'm beginning to take all this a bit seriously. How do you think I'm taking it? Maybe a bloody awful producer, but you're the best I've got. I'd hate to lose you. Tar. But nobody slipped you a bit of paper, have they? I don't know. How can I know? That's the whole point. It's supposed to be a secret, because once you know how it works, you can put the curse back on the sender by giving the piece of paper back to them. Look, I'll read you the book. What's that? 
Robert. I was in the Brotherton Library last week. I was waiting to check out a pile of books when somebody knocked them over. I didn't take much notice of him, but... Yes, it was a big man. He picked them up for me. Could you have slipped something into one of them? I could have slipped something into one of them. Yes. They're in what I laughingly call my study. Come on, Paul. Nothing to say. God, it's hot in here. Must be something wrong with the heating. Mind if I open the window? No, no, please. It's hot in here. No, I can't understand it. The heating's not on even. Which ones are they? Oh, there are six of them, I think. Um, yes, it's these. Nope. No. to have a life of its own. Let me see. I wonder what it says. Know any runic speakers? I don't think it's something that you speak. I don't even know what runes are. It's the earliest Teutonic alphabet, actually an adaptation of the Greek alphabet. Thanks. Is there any way we can find out what it says? Doesn't really matter what it says, does it? We know what it means. Yeah. I've got an envelope. What for? We send it back to Carswell, right? Wrong. I have to give it to him. I have to hand it to him personally. If he's hiding away in his rectory... He must come out sometimes. He knows what you look like. He must do if it was him at the library. Well, I don't know. I, I wear my hair in a bun, dark glasses, that sort of thing. OK. How long have I got before this thing works? We assume the same amount of time as Harrington had. That's a month. A month from the day it was handed to me. Hold it a moment. Now, I was at the library on the, uh, the 2nd of November. That means you've got 10 days to the 2nd of December. I think it's more likely to be a lunar month. So that would make it the... the 30th of November. Eight days.
Yes, miss? Ah, uh, I'd like to see Mr. Carswell, please. My name is Rogers, Mrs. Rogers. Oh, yes, Mrs. Rogers. Mr. Carswell's expecting you. Come this way. Mrs. Rogers? Mrs. Rogers? Oh, Mr. Carswell, I, I... Come sit down. Won't you please? Uh, thank you. From the Council for the Protection of Rural England. And uh, I have a questionnaire question. you'd like me to fill in? Why, why, yes. It's about the application for the proposed Ring Road. So, um, if you wouldn't mind, um, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it with you. I, I'm sure you'd like time to study it. Please? No, no, Miss Stunning. You'd have to be much more clever than that. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> the local news agency. He was expecting me. The housekeeper knew my name, even the name I was using. Housekeeper? Well, well I suppose it was a housekeeper. She had a sort of overall on. She wear glasses? Yes. Mrs. Pierce. He laughed at me. He just sat there and laughed at me. Yes, I know that laugh. Mrs. Pierce. Has been dead three years now. Well, it couldn't have been her then, could it? Well, it couldn't have been her. Well, he hasn't taken on nobody else. Not his housekeeper, he hasn't. Uh, nobody around here likes working for him. Carswell's going away. The shooting of Drows is going abroad. Where to? Venezuela. When? Next Thursday, the 30th. last day. Well, in a way, it's quite a good thing, really. You can't give him the piece of paper while he's holed up in his house. No. Nor when he's in Venezuela. But in between. Catch him on the wing, you mean? Well, it's your only chance. Oh. Try and eat something, Pooh. Oh, it, it's lovely, but I, I, I just... Come on. Sorry, Jean. Well, let's at least try and make a plan. Somehow, you've got to give him the runes between his house and the aeroplane, right? Oh, for heaven's sake! I've tried already! It won't work! Come on, 
crew, darling. We mustn't get a stop. Where are you going? To phone the airport. I better keep your damn bags up. My apologies, sir. Mr. Powers, where's your ticket? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carswell. towards an ultimate agreement. The Prime Minister said in the Commons last night that negotiations in Brussels over the monetary spiral had reached stalemate, pending a summit meeting in February. In Iran, See, back. rioters and soldiers have clashed in the capital, Tehran. Did you do it? Administrators made barricades of I lorries and cars. I think so. 60 civilian she did it. Are reported. Oh, thank God for that. It'll be a cold night well, what happened? With her maximum what effect did it have on him? He just stared at me with his eyes. And then? He just walked through into the departure lounge and disappeared. just reached us of an air disaster over the Bristol Channel involving a Brazilian jumbo bound for Caracas. First reports tell of a violent disturbance in the passenger department and a rapid loss of altitude. The pilot was heard to speak of panic and confusion but did not specify a cause. Seconds later, all communication with the plane was lost. Local shipping has been diverted to the area. We'll be giving you more details on this story as they come in.